Massachusetts, Mark from the United States. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, Mark from the States. How are we doing today? I'm doing fantastic. Hopefully you are as well. Uh, today, we're going on another walk. This time is with Mike from Living Walks. Great channel. You know, I I, I have two uh, vi uh, channels that um, that we watch and learn from that do these types of videos where they walk and you get to see in, you know, real time what, what everything looks like and seeing just, it's, I love it because it's just, you're, it's like you're right there. And today we've done a, f a few videos on this, on this place. It's York. Um, but I went back and looked at the videos that we did. It really one was on, uh, York castle or maybe not the castle the tower there what's it called um i'm gonna have to look at my notes <laughs> clifford clifford's tower i believe is what it's called um we did one on that and then we had a uh, a video of uh, another couple who kind of uh did a video of just kind of cruising around to the some of the main points, but it wasn't very long or in depth, but in a good video. I enjoyed it. Um, but this is going to be a little more in depth. Uh, this is a long one, maybe in two parts. I don't know. Um, maybe not. Maybe we'll just go all the way through. It's going to be over an hour. So hang tight. Let me adjust this camera. I don't know if this is, maybe that's better. Uh, so I invite you to get comfortable on this couch with me. It's big, it's fake, it's very relaxing. You'll enjoy it, I promise you. Kick your shoes off. Um, the city of York with Mike. Mike, uh, please, all of you, go support his channel, Living Walks. The links, of course, are below and to this video and to his channel. Very cool. Um, please go support him, it's so important that you do. He has given us his blessing uh, a while back, and he's just uh, one of the channel's favorites. And I just hope, I just hope that we can support him in what he's doing. It's awesome. So it allows me to see new, and I, I even though I've done a few videos on York, I'm going to see stuff today that I've never seen before. And then that's what's awesome. I'm sure we're going to hit up the. the the spots that we have seen. We did a Christmas video, uh, a Christmas market video with Walking with Tim, who's also a great channel, by the way. He did a Christmas market video, I believe, that we did from here. And he walked some of the places as well. But um, this is going to be special. So sit back, relax, and uh, let's do it. Hello, Walkers. We're here in York. This is Britain's most haunted city. And it's also the site of so many bloody conquests. We had the vicious Vikings here, we had the Romans, we had the Normans. Stay tuned. If you want to know where to find the best ghosts, I'm going to tell you the most haunted places here and tell you some of its gruesome history. And you know. Clifford's Tower. There you go. We did a, uh, a video on this. Uh, a while back, I can't remember when, but um, York is definitely one of the places I want to go and visit. It is after London, I think I'd want to go to York and Bath, but I think York, I definitely want to go to York. You know, if you're a Harry Potter fan, stick with us. Oh, there's a little treat for you along the way. Thanks for joining us again. We're Looks here busy. in Fossgate. Oh, by the way, look at that building over there, the Merchant's Hall. That is pretty old. That goes back to the 14th century. Dang. And it's an adventurous hall there. So think of the old guilds, play D&D, &D, things like that. You know about guilds, don't you? So, old guild hall down there, just down the alleyway. Go and have a look. It's really cute. I said this place was called Fossgate. Okay, so it gets the word Foss from the River Foss, which is just behind us. 
I guess the word gate, not because there's a big gate somewhere, no. Gate is a Viking word. Yeah, it means street. Now, just to confuse you, because of the actual gates to the city, well, we can't call them gates, can we? So they're actually called bars. If you come here, you'll see lots of places called bars around here. Fosgate here, this road was originally, so this would have been the sort of southeast entrance to the city, and that would have been for the Romans. And can you imagine? Like the Romans trooping up here and their legionnaires' armour and weaponry. Now, along here too, by the way, but more recent now, uh, if you're into chocolate, like round trees, okay, big British company in the past before it got taken over, but hey, you know, this is where they started from humble origins. There's a little chocolate factory down here, started in the 19th century. But today, look around you, this is a lovely place to come for uh, some sweet coffee. It's a lovely introduction to the city, particularly because we're not far from the shambles, and that's almost directly overhead. We will be visiting the shambles, you may have heard of them. Stay tuned, there's loads of stuff we're going to see. We're going to learn about violent history. We're going to see all the most haunted places. So when you come here, you can find them out for yourself. And we're just going to learn some weird facts. And there are some weird facts here. But just over there... It's very busy. I'm going to wait for this bus to go past. So you see a little sign there. Most people are sitting on the wall. Little sign saying Whip Mawatma Gate. Very short street sign. Whip Mawatma Gate is an extremely short street, possibly the shortest in York. In fact, it's only 80 foot long. There you go, you can just see the sign there. It's an unusual name. Uh, it's first recorded in like the 1500s. And we think it might have meant something like neither one thing nor the other street. Makes sense. Uh, another theory also is the whip part might refer to the fact that it could have been the former location of York's whipping post and stocks for punishments in good old medieval times. You can imagine that, can't you? Being tied up there, being whipped in front of everybody. It's not very nice, is it? That's British past for you. Now this here is Colligate. Colligate, what do you think that might mean? Well, gate means street, and Collier really comes from the charcoal merchants, okay, who used to operate in this area. <coughs> now, you'll be pleased to know, um, there is some ghosties down here. First of all, a couple of buildings, um, 18 and 19, which is just passing on the right here. Okay, they're probably the best buildings of the street. They're built in 1748, very famous. But up ahead, in a little while, we're going to see the Black Sheep Brewery. Now, the brewery and its meeting rooms is a labyrinth of little rooms, and it dates back to the 18th century. Uh, it's got a colourful past, though. It was once a morgue, and it's been a vicarage, would you believe? And now, of course, it's a brewery, which we're going to see in a moment. It's a natural progression. <laughs> Staff, though, <laughs> often report hearing heavy footsteps. Oh, yeah. And it's said that the tables have a, a queer habit of moving around by themselves. And if this isn't ghostly enough for you, there it is on the right-hand side, we're just coming up to it. It's said that there are a lot of malevolent spirit stalks the halls. Very tall, very thin, wears a tall hat. Let's make it clear he would not prefer to have people around him. He seems to enjoy shouting and slamming doors. What they say. Last drop. But all these buildings down here, they're all listed buildings, okay? Because again, this is a very old city. Now, this is always a great place to stop. There's always street entertainment going on here. One well, you see in the background there, uh, York's chocolate history. Uh, we're not going to be going in today, but it's quite well known. It's a uh, chocolate museum tells the history really of uh, chocolate making in York, particularly huh. as I mentioned, Round Trees, which is a big name. Uh, they, they started here. 
If you go in, uh, you'll learn all about the, the history of chocolate and its beginnings. Did you know it began in modern day Mexico? Do you believe that? That's right. And then it spread. It spread to Britain and the rest of Europe. Here's another little tidbit for you, by the way. York chocolate. York chocolate. It's not just something to eat. It's also the name of a breed. A breed of American cat. So there we are. Don't get them confused. Really? I never knew that. So we're going to follow these people down here. I know it's going a little bit slow at the moment. We're heading down to the shambles. And you'll see in a moment what's so special. And again, I mentioned Harry Potter. Keep your eyes peeled to see what you think as we just turn the corner. Just down here. So far. See how all the buildings lean in? So cool, though. So cool. Well, so the shambles gets its name from the old Anglo Saxon word, means flashamos, meaning streets of the butchers. That's right. It's once lined with butchers displaying meat. Check out the shops, by the way. You're going to see a lot of magic and Harry Potter themed shops down here. The York Ghost down here. So there used to be quite a lot of uh, butcher shops down here, over 30. Uh, today, none of them remain. Because uh, there used to be the slaughterhouses just behind them too, which was service them, and then got shut down. But uh, all these buildings overhang, and why do they do that? Because when you think about it, who wants to keep all the sun off the meat? Or well, number 10, by the way, which we're just uh, passing. So which is number 10? I think we just passed that. It's quite cute. So um, <coughs> it's got a little bit of Harry Potter ness about it. And in fact, if you look on Google Maps, uh, its address isn't number 10, the shambles. The address is nine and three quarters, the shambles, which is quite cool. But something perhaps also they don't draw attention to is that it's thought to be in the home of someone called Margaret Clitheroe. She was a butcher's wife who was executed in, I think, the, what, the 1600s. And she I think we did a video on her. Didn't we do one with uh, History Squad? <clears throat> Excuse me. And Kevin Hicks, didn't he? Didn't we do one with... I'm going to have to go back and look, but the name sounds really familiar. She was doing that because she was harboring Catholic priests. Yeah, 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 yeah. She got like rest. Incidentally, by the way, before she was executed, I believe she had a hand cut off. It was immensely cruel, isn't it? I think you can go and see that, actually. You can go and see that somewhere. Uh, let me think. I think it's back in, um, yeah, the Bar Convent. If you go there, I think you're going to find uh, they kept her hands and put in a little glass jar or something. That's weird. <laughs> anyway, let's come out here to the market. So these are little alleyways that lead into this market are called Snickleways. And here there's uh, loads of stuff to get. Wow. The shambles has been voted Britain's most uh, picturesque street. Really? Well, at least um, that was what, 10 years ago. And so it's connection with Harry Potter then. So people have said, you know what, it's a probable inspiration for Diagon Alley and Harry Potter books. Now, J.K. Rowling wrote books, has sort of denied this. He said, well, at the time, she'd never even been to the shambles. But, you know, uh, rumours persist. And to be fair, to be fair, the shambles does look like a movie set. I mean, it's crazy. <laughs> but it's just awesome. At least from this side of the camera over here or the computer screen.
It looks, it, it almost looks like it's not real. Hello. Hey, mate. How you doing? <laughs> so this street here, so the shambles has been known by other names. I think things like um, Haymonger, Haymonger Gate, uh, Nedler Gate, and the Great Flesh Shambles. Do you agree? The shambles is a little bit easier to say now. So very medieval, isn't it? This is so well preserved. It, it is. is. So, you know, you've got to come to York, really, if you're coming to the UK. So Gert and Henry's here. This restaurant is a grade two listed building. Before he continues, I just know if and when I do get to York, I'm just going to be taking pictures of buildings like just with the Tudor style. I'm just really fascinated by that architecture and it's just all the different shapes and sizes. And it's just awesome. And it's just, I just have a feeling I'm going to have just my, my camera phone is just going to have so much uh, pictures of buildings, <laughs> which probably wouldn't happen anywhere else, but I don't know. So far, I'm really enjoying this. It's, it's such a unique place. In a, in, in a place, in a country full of unique places, is basically what I'm saying. The old part of it goes back to the 14th century. And it's been several things. A chemist, an art shop. Uh, I think it was a hatter's, a millinery's. Let's head down this way. It seems, uh, it, it has seemed like it, it is very, uh, well, just a lot of tourists, I'm sure. So, of course, places that are very popular and just full of interest and all those things, it's going to draw a lot of crowds, for sure. Old Sandwiches Cafe here, we're just passing by the way. Uh, it's one of the oldest surviving buildings, by the way, on Newgate, uh, number 12. And it's a typical old uh, tenement house, built, I think, in the 14th century. So quite a long time ago. Wow. And tenement houses like these, of course, were originally built, they were just like one room upstairs and one room downstairs. And uh, this backs onto uh, the church cemetery. So people lived in very small buildings in the past. And of course, there may well have been more than one family. There have been several families there. Hygiene would have been interesting because there were no toilets. <laughs> so everyone would have been uh, sharing a bucket. Awful. What happens to the contents of the bucket? Well, out the window, generally. Uh, this area, I think, is called Swinegate. Really old street. This goes uh, way back to Roman times. And this uh, area here, this uh, the original settlement here, was called uh, Boricum. So it goes right back to those days. Called Swine Street again because uh, pigs were sold here. It's kind of other interesting things about York that you might not know, by the way. Um, Guy Fawkes. Now, if you're not British, you may not have heard of Guy Fawkes Night. So, 5th of November in the UK, everyone has big bonfires and we like fireworks. And maybe if you're really young, you might not know this either, but we used to make like, an effigy. Okay, out of old, of old trousers and jumpers, and we fill it up with newspaper, 
and then we'd stick it on top of the fire and we'd burn it. And that was Guy Fawkes. Okay, so this goes back to like the 1500s. Guy Fawkes was responsible for what they call the gunpowder plot. Basically, he and fellow conspirators all plotted to basically destroy Whoa. parliaments, and they were doing that. We all know the story of Guy Fawkes, of course, uh, but that view right there, off in the distance with the, the towers of, uh, the, I'm assuming the cathedral, um, just popping up. Oh, wow, that looks so cool. By packing explosives underneath gunpowder, and then we're gonna light it. And parliaments and all the uh, politicians inside, would have been all blown to smithereens. It was only for chance that he was spotted and he met a grisly end, hung, drawn and quartered. Not a nice way to go, I can say, but we still celebrate that day. Guy Fawkes Night. So he was uh, born here and we'll probably pass his um, birthplace. In fact, I know we will. Now this is nice walking around here because so many shops are still open. And you might think that on our walks like this, we, we do show you some of the nicer cities in Britain, but this is quite unusual. There are other parts of Britain and a lot of Britain really where shops have really suffered. Lots of shops have shut because of online retailers like Amazon. And of course, simply because in the UK, councils and so on have had their budgets so rents for shops have had to rise and just so many people can't afford it so coming down here it's lovely to see all these shops healthy and happy wow. so we're to gate then this is where we are so york was first occupied I think it was about 8,000 BC. That's right. And again, there's been Romans, there's been Angles, been Vikings here. Well, the word uh, Yorkshire derives from the word uh, Borokon. It's an old name, possibly meaning the place of the yew trees. So you can imagine at one point this was a place where lots of yew trees were growing. We're heading up this way and we're coming to uh, have a look at York Minster. We'll talk a little bit about that in a moment. It's just so cool with it just off in the background. It almost looks like a As we wander like a around, painting back keep an there. eye out. So something that's quite interesting is there are around about, I think it's about 20 cat statues hidden around York's city centre and are placed on the tops of buildings or on corners. And why are they there? So well, they're a little bit like gargoyles in a way. But it was believed that having the cats up there would frighten away rats and mice. And people knew at that time, they didn't know about germs, but they did know that rats and mice carried diseases. So that was the idea. So keep an eye out. You get a brownie point if you see a little cat statue somewhere. Rock and roll barbecue. It might be that you've heard of a particular British delicacy called Yorkshire pudding. But if you have, uh, it's not used as a dessert. Uh, way, pudding in the UK especially normally refers to desserts. No, it's savoury, it's something you'd have with, say, beef. Mm -hmm. and uh, roast potatoes. It's good. So it's a batter that's cooked in the oven. And uh, it's an old recipe. It goes back to 1730-something. It was originally called a dripping pudding. It's a dripping meaning fat. Uh, and Yorkshire, the Yorkshire bit, was stuck on the front not that long after, probably 10 years or so. We're just heading down this way, and oh, look at this corner. Minster Gates. I just love the colours of these buildings. Oh, my god! And there... There she blows. There she is, York Minster. 
That is awesome. So it occupies the site. So it used to be uh, an important Roman basilica long ago. And we'll see, we'll potter over and have a look at the statue. There's a statue over there that, that celebrates Emperor Constantine being proclaimed Roman Emperor in York, then in Oboricum. And that was like 300 AD. Just wow. over there, we'll go and have a look in a second. Now, even though it's made of brick, or made of stone, rather, the cathedral has undergone a number of fires. A religious fanatic named Jonathan Martin, he set fire to cathedral what? in 1829. He gutted the interior. Lame. Ah, so beautiful. In 1984, was struck by lightning. Again, caused another devastating fire that collapsed the roof. What year? Collapsed the roof. Four. In 1984, wow. struck by lightning. Again, caused another devastating fire that collapsed the roof. There he is. Constantine. Constantine. Look at that. that There's so many fires here. 741, 1137, 1840. But it bounces back. <laughs> the Great Rose Window takes back to 1500 and something. There's over 100,000 tiny bits of stained glass in it, and that and that really refers to, it was the union of the, the two great houses, the Lancaster and York. <laughs> That's where you're gonna see a lot of red and white in its design. The central tower of this is uh, over 230 feet high. And it weighs the equivalent of, well, if you think of uh, the jets, jumbo jets, think of 40 of them. No, not just them. No, people pretending to be bad. So they're not. Now, here, there are some ghostly goings on. Oh, yes. Apparently, in the 1820s, a little tour group, a couple of people got separated and they wandered around and they encountered a man in a naval uniform. The guy approached them and whispered in their ears before wandering off. Story goes, it was actually the person's brother, and they had made a pact together that whoever died first had to come and tell the other if there really was an afterlife. I don't, I've never so there we are. Apparently, after dying at sea, the brother returned to keep his promise. <laughs> now, another ghost that is said to haunt York Minister is a young man believed to be Dean Gale. He died here in 1700, 1702. Apparently his ghost has been reported sitting in the pews and listening to the sermons. It costs a lot of money, by the way, to keep York Minster going. So 15,000 pounds a day. Wow. Quite a lot. Ah, now you see the, uh, worth it, though. the three coloured umbrellas over there? That building there. And you see the, Guy uh, Fox. the pub sign above it. Okay, you might recognize that mask, okay? It's often been used in films like Viva Vendetta. And it's used by um, the anonymous group. It's said to be the mask used by Guy Fawkes because that building there is where Guy Fawkes was born, 1570. Oh, wow. That's cool. Yeah, I'm going to have a 
across some of the most haunted buildings in a minute. So I'm just gonna take a right down here in a sec. Down on Stonegate. Stonegate, well, it's got its name because, well, gate for road, stone. Well, it's probably one of the first paved stone roads in York. And that was probably something to celebrate at the time because that was pretty unusual. And in medieval times, well, you know, we've been lots of glass painters and goldsmiths, printers would have been put in here. Now 35, Stonegate on the left over here, it's passing in a second. Takes the remains of a 15th century building. Uh, it's believed actually it might have been used as a uh, site of pagan rituals. That was before the Normans came here. But it's it's generally considered as York's most haunted building. Certainly it seems to be there's been a building there for at least a thousand years. And it's said that there's at least 14 different ghosts that have been seen here, possibly even more. And it might be that they became a bit more active in the late 90s because the property got heavily renovated. Who knows, maybe the, all that work stirred them up. And here, the old Star Inn. Okay, this is an old kitchen inn. It goes back to 1644. But the cellars are thought to be a little older. And it's the cellars themselves that are the focal point for hauntings. Many people have reported hearing the screams Royalist soldiers. Mm. And not surprising, so if you look at records, records show that they they were actually used as makeshift hospitals for soldiers during the English Civil War. Now some of the other paranormal activity that's linked to it include the old lady dressed in black who's often seen walking down the stairs from the upper floors. And the two ghostly black cats are seen around the barn. The legend says, and this is, you might not want to hear this, but the cats were bricked up inside a pillar. That's right. See, there was a practice of bricking up cats in a building. It was quite superstitious, but it was hopefully said to uh, protect the building against fire and ill luck. It's not so lucky for the cats. For the it? cat, exactly. <laughs> and even now, people say they bring their dogs into the bar only for them to growl at the, one of the pillars there. Because of the bricked up cats. Now this is a lovely day. So you can walk around some of the highlights of York quite quickly. I was going to say, it's going to have a few walks on uh, York nice. here because there's different areas to explore. Look at all the history seeping out of these buildings. So this is one of my favourite British cities, and it's it's easy to say that because it's pretty. It's well kept. It's prosperous. Gets lots of visitors. Mm -hmm. I say this every time we we do these types of videos, but it needs to be said. Your cities are so clean. Um, it, it really, it's almost glaring how clean they are. Now, granted. We see a lot of touristy areas, so they make a real good effort. So maybe it's not like that everywhere you go, but uh, 
you go to like to LA and there's just crap everywhere. It's awful. You go to New York, they do their best. But, you know, and LA is certainly not walkable. You have to drive to a place, walk or just in that area, then drive some, you know, get on the freeway, wait an hour <laughs> while just trying to drive five miles takes you an hour. Uh, and then, um, and I'm exaggerating, but you, y'all get what I'm saying. It's just, the traffic is awful, but, um, it's certainly not as I see these videos, especially the walking ones. And it's just always so pretty clean, um, everywhere. It's just, I love how you, it's really like an emphasis on keeping the area looking good. At least that's how it looks to a foreigner. I'm taking you up here because I want to show you a little bit of a, a British institution. Well, it's at least it's here. And I think the other one we saw was in Harrogate. And that's something called uh, Betty's Tea Room. A lot of people, when they come here, they book a little spot in Betty's. Betty's Tea Room. Just coming up here on the left. I love that building, though. As you might gather by something called Tea Room, it sells teas and cakes. It goes back to 1919 or so. Now, a lot of people will come here for afternoon tea. That's where you have a big stack of plates that have got various cakes and sandwiches on. Uh, it's normally served in the upstairs room, the Belmont room. And the interiors in there are apparently inspired by the, the famous Queen Mary ocean liner. So quite sumptuous. Oh, you do have to book, by the way. What's he looking at? Again, all these buildings just exuding history. So this here we're coming into is Coney Street. So the main Roman road that would have gone through the original city of uh, Oricum uh, would have gone along this route. Now, back in the 12th century, Coney Street here was quite well known for its Jewish population. And that included uh, Aaron of Jew, uh, Aaron of York. And he was considered the wealthiest Jew in England at the time. However, it was not a happy tale, really, because in 1190, a lot of Jewish homes here were burned down during what was the notorious York Massacre. That's right. In fact, the city's Jewish community had to take refuge in York Castle. Many of them were killed. Why was that? It all goes back to Richard I. So he was crowned king just a year before. And he said, right, I'm joining the Crusades. And this sort of bit this inflamed anti-Jewish sentiment. And rumours spread, as they do, and we all know about that now, don't we, uh, began to spread that the king had ordered, oh, well, that the English Jews should be attacked. He never said anything of the sort. Well, that's what happened. Just shows you don't need social media just to spread mm -hmm. rumours like that. Oh, far. New Street. The 
down here we'll find uh, Brown's department store. Yes. That's been around since 1900, so fairly old. And at the end, Davy Gate. So Davy Gate uh, originates from uh, a house or a hall that was there. That was owned by David. Uh, he was the king's larderer or keeper of the larder back in the 13th century. To Parliament Street. One thing I haven't seen is cars. Um, all just walking streets. Um, looks like a lot of it has just been, it's just this whole area that you, you can't drive. Maybe I've just been so, you know, focused on other things that maybe there have been cars and I just haven't noticed them, but um, just incredible. It's a site, by the way, so that was would have been New York's main street market in like sort of 1836 to 1955. And there would have been older houses there and shops that basically swept away. Day. There's quite a few people uh, dressed up in Viking outfits, demonstrating some of the old skills. Oh, look at those flags. <laughs> That's awesome. Big Viking Festival. Take a dip through here, actually. A lot of people. Hopefully, the music won't get picked up by YouTube's algorithm. Hopefully. Oh, 
remember this, we were here earlier. Slight different view. And it was spot on. So it's like a farmer's market Sorry. as well. Which so we're here in York for a, a long cool. weekend. I'd say, you know, that's a good amount of time. So what to do here? A lot of history. It's a place you just can walk around and soak up the atmosphere. There's galleries. Castle Museum is uh, particularly good fun. Yeah, I want to check out the Viking experience. They've got uh, an exhibition there which basically has uh, transports you through different eras all the way back to like, sort of the 17th century. So you can see how people lived. Yeah, that recreates cool. uh, York's Castle Prison. You can see just what it was like to be an inmate in the old days in the original prison cells. <laughs> Oh, now we're back. Here. Back down here, the shambles. The potions cauldron, I think that might be number 10 or number 9 and 3 quarters. Oh, there's a guy down here earlier dressed in. The Lou, I think it was, uh, collecting money for, I think it was Ukraine. I mean, he's been here all day, so let's we'll see if we see him again. Hats off to the man. Oh, here we are. Ah, that guy. <laughs> Yeah, you're right. Oh. <laughs> shop that the shop must, that must not be named. Wow. Yeah, it's got a cute must be Harry Potter related. I'll tell you what, with these cobbles and great streets, cobblestone streets and whatnot, it, it would, to be in a wheelchair, must be, you know, brutal. Yeah. Building over there looks like it's collapsing in the What's middle there. Oh, Tudor looking building. And you know it's Tudor because it's got the okay, white wood with a white in between. Kind of that pub over there. Golden Fleece. And the Golden Sheep just outside. That's the Golden Fleece. Goes back to the 16th century. Dang. Uh, yes. Wouldn't it be haunted? Sure. The most famous spook in there is that Lady Alice Packett, a wife of the former Lord Mayor. We're going to go back. To, I'll go back a little bit so we can hear that story. But I just want to point out that, or you know, you see just the dip. Um, I just love the imperfection of the Tudor style, and just and over time, built. You know, the building is swayed one way or dipped as it looks like it has there it's just so cool <laughs> I, just, I just find it fascinating i don't know why it fascinates me so much but it does go figure lady alice packets a wife of the former lord mayor who used to live next door it said that there are other ghosts there a canadian airman who fell to his death from the upstairs window mm. what was he doing i don't know so try, so try not to get caught who knows and his old one-eyed Jack. 
chap who sits there in the bar with a pistol. His old 16th century coat. Quite red. Let's head up here. High Ooze Gate. Some Jen follows just one of the main roads that would have led out. Something like this, of course, has got lots of history. So it's not surprising they found evidence here of an old Roman bathhouse, temples nearby. And so you've got to find that most uh, buildings along here are actually dated from. Uh, 1700 onwards and simply because there was a massive fire here about six years before that and destroyed 30 houses Viking Raiders. You don't really want to be on the welcoming end of a group of Viking Raiders. That encounter always tends to end badly. So just across the road down here, we're going to find the uh, Jorvik Center. Jorvik. Not Jorvik. I think I may have called it Jorvik. So it's definitely worth going in. It's a bit like um, if you've ever done a dark ride tour where you sort of sit in a little seat and it moves around. Uh, well, basically, what they've done is recreated a Viking village, complete with all the smells and sounds. Oh, yes. Uh, but it's really fun. It's really dark, but it's really interesting. And it's uh, the 1650 when we went in. So that's for adults. So this is uh, Sounds fun. Gate, by the way, so Actually. it's been a major glass making district during Roman times. It got abandoned and then uh, really became part of the Viking town of Jorvik. In the 70s, so, you know, not that long ago, um, they uncovered some really well-preserved buildings down here, back from the sort of Viking era. And it found over like 40,000 artefacts, including uh, something that's famous called the York Helmet. So it's an Anglo-Saxon helmet, considered one of the best-preserved examples. So here it is, York Museum. Well worth going in. Something else that those uh, excavations uncovered, of course, was um, a lot of bodies, well, skeletons, and showing signs of decapitation. Mm. So, the past was a very violent time. We think today's violent, but not at all. Every generation sees slightly less violence than the previous one. I don't think that chap is part of the museum. I think he probably just uh, wanders <laughs> around a bit, poses for photographs. This way is Castle Gate. It's one thing you certainly notice, lots of places to eat and drink. Uh, There's just been so many good coffee shops, because of course, I have to mention coffee. Mm -hmm. I know, can't help it. You know. 
So I want us to lead us down to the, uh, the waterfront, to the quay. Stay with us, there's still plenty more yet. We haven't seen the castle yet. The castle museum. We also want to see Clifford's Tower. That goes back to William the Conqueror. So William the Conqueror invaded Britain, took it over, part of the Norman Conquest. Number 1066, you might have heard of that date. Those kids in the UK have uh, had to memorise that date. has been the subject of so many invasions over the years. I can't wait for myself to invade. I'm looking forward to invading. Hopefully it goes uh, better than those other invasions. <laughs> it's going to be fun, though. Can't wait. So we've been walking around about 50 minutes. Ooh. Hasn't seen that, that way to go yet. So stay with us. There's too many places to pop in and have a, have a drink. I said, it's like you have to spend a while, several days, I'm sure, to be able to just enjoy, not be rushed. Now down here, this is the way down to the key. Really nice when the weather's good. Oh, man, that looks you'll so see. cool. Um, came past here earlier, pretty busy. Everyone's out, yeah. enjoying the sun, and drink. Just taking King Street down to King Stace. So the key itself down here was built in 14th century. It's 1300 and something. 1360, 66 perhaps. Grand it's the main key for the city, so key being placed for all the ships to moor up. Mm -hmm. The street, by the way, still floods. Okay, and in fact, um, down here, you'll see the King's Arms and the Keep an eye out, we might see the markings of where the flood water levels are marked. There's a car. It's arms, there it is. Something I never. Well, it's not that I didn't know about. This is something you don't see a lot of. Pretty really nice, isn't it? This is very. Cool. It gets very busy down here. Love it. Get an outside out seat. Here. Well, you just have to hang around a bit until someone gets up and then pounce. Uh, yeah. Bonds are very good at that. It's one of her definite skills. <laughs> she can spot a couple about to leave the table from 300 yards. That's that's awesome. Uh, my wife Jennifer, she's good at that. Got a nice extreme van here, by the way, on the right. So uh, yeah, if you're not native to the UK, 
You might not know what that is. That sells ice creams. It's a sunny long time ago, so when I was a tiny little child, ice cream vans would drive around the local streets, especially at weekends, and you'd hear their bells ringing. We have those And you'd go out and you'd buy an ice cream from them. Because a lot of people didn't have freezers. Or if they did, they just didn't have ice creams at home. Curiously, where I live in the UK, I've started to hear them back again. So, a bit of a renaissance. Guessing all these apartments looking over the water are going to cost a pretty penny. Oh, I bet. Anything over the water does. Doesn't matter where you are. Said if you're coming to York, give yourself a few days. Yes. Well, at least two full days, I reckon. This is so cool. Yeah. I'd be interested to know what these cruises, where they go. If you would like to get on one of these, get a, just a different view. More, more in though, behind me, cheaper size. Let's see where people and see where they're from. So we're heading towards Clifford's Tower. There's a few uh, interesting laws. I think uh, you find it generally in uh, most countries, don't you, that have been sort of forgotten. Apparently, I think it's still legal. So apparently, and someone can correct me if I'm wrong, but if you're born in York, okay, you are permitted, you can shoot a Scotsman, that's right, someone from Scotland, Ever a bar and arrow, from the top of Clifford's Tower. But you have to do it on a Sunday. Of course you have to do it on a Sunday. On a Sunday, but yeah. apparently, that's legal. Of course... Don't take my word for it. I'm not a lawyer, etc., etc. You want to say hello? We're going to pause right here for a sec. Come here. You want to say hello? Here's my girl. You want to say hello? Hi, yeah. How you doing, baby? You want to say hello? No? All right. <laughs> She just sits there and goes in and out of my legs while we're doing the video, so I figured she wanted to say hello. Oh, and I think uh, someone else is here. I think Cooper just got home. Hey, buddy. Hey there. How you doing? Good. How was your night? Right on. We get a shower, change, and then go out. Okay. I get to the beach for a That's right. You do. Awesome. Just cool past the water. Uh, would have been really the walls nice. of the York Franciscan Friary. 
And this would have been um, a public washing site right here, so people would have done all their clothes washing. No. Makes sense, really. You're just by the river. There's the access to water. Nice little place to sit, relax. It's actually nice actually to walk under the trees because it has been quite warm. You might not be able to tell that by seeing what people are wearing. But when the sun's out, you can really feel it. So that tower, you can see ahead of you, that is oh, Clifford's Tower. It is. So it's built by William the Conqueror. Uh, not himself, obviously, I don't think he probably actually laid a single stone. No, he was busy conquering. But it was part of York Castle. That was built in 1068, so almost immediately after the Norman invasion. And there's a, an artificial mound or mot. Mot. That's the tower right. is Mont. built on top. Oh, that is so cool. Now, it used oh. to originally be uh, a wooden tower. If you remember, I was talking about in 1190, um, the attack on the Jewish population here. And so the Jews here that were living here fled to the tower for safety. That's right. Well, that got destroyed. No point in it. I hear committed suicide rather than renounce their faith. Got that crack right down. <laughs> it looks like from top to bottom. It's called Clifford's Tower because uh, Roger the Clifford rebelled against King Edward II, he was executed for treason by being hanged in chains from the Tower Walls. That was in the 1300s, early 1300s. The site featured, of course, in the English Civil War back in the 1640s. And the Royalists, some garrison themselves here. They built platforms on the roof. Lined up with the guns, but hey, they eventually surrendered to the parliamentarians. Very cool. So the interior, severely damaged by a gunpowder explosion in late 1600s. So basically just leaving the outer walls. So also, it's particularly why there's a distinctive pink colouring. That's because of that explosion. Oh, interesting. It's not always been cared for in the 18th and 19th centuries. It's a bit neglected. Uh, someone even said it was used as a cattle shed. Not sure if that's true. But the, uh, the government took it over. The York Castle Museum then, that's what we're heading towards. You can see it just ahead of us here. So that was built on the site of York Castle itself. And the actual museum building uh, used to be part of the York Prison Complex, it goes back to the sort of 18th century. It also includes the county jail where, another famous name from British history, Dick Turpin yes. was in prison. So Dick Turpin, famous highwayman used to rob people in the horse heard of that name. He was uh, executed in 1739. As I mentioned, though, 
There's an exhibition here. You can go and sit in some of the original cells and see what it would have been like for people. And in two, there's a go through the period rooms, and that's going to show you what it's like to live in different centuries. See how people lived in the past. There's also a little toy story thing showing you 150 years of childhood toys and games. But for now, I hope that's whet your wow. appetite. Very cool. York, hope you make it here. Thanks for joining us. Until the next one. Take care. I loved it. I loved it. Thank you, Mike, for allowing us to come along. Uh, just very enjoyable. Just, it really does give you the impression you're there. And it's just, I got to see, of course, the things that we've seen in other videos. Shambles. Um, but the, and Clifford Tower, we, we've done a video on that as well, but never got to see here the museum. Never, I don't think I've ever seen the waterfront. Um, the, uh, York Minster. Yeah. Briefly you see it, but not from the angles that I got, how it just sticks out from down the street. And it just is like, oh, kind of takes your breath away in a way it's, it's just this is what this was awesome this is i knew it was going to be good when i saw this video and i was like oh that's going to be great because this york is definitely a place i want to go and uh, this just has amplified that desire to go even more um, yes the shambles looks amazing um just of course, the architecture, um, not just to the Tudors, which, you know, I love, but uh, all these others, like even the museum itself looks like an amazing day to hang out and, and see all of that. It's just, oh, of course, the Yorvik Viking Center, I want to see that and um, just, mm, I w I'm, I'm even interested in doing that river cruise thing whatever that, wherever that takes you, I, I'm, I'm, it just gives you a different view uh, than you would normally get. And that's, you know, if I'm going to go here, um, you got to have a couple days for sure. Um, at least, at least, I don't know if it'll be when I get to go to London, if we can, you know, take the train, you know, up here and have a couple days up here. Um, I also want to see Bath, visit Bath, um, Bath, however you want to say it. Um, you know, there's just so many places I want to go. It's just, it's almost maddening because it's just like, where, where do I go? I, if I have to narrow it down, I mean, London, obviously, number one. And then hopefully maybe catch one of these also along with London or just a second trip to take you to these other places and just travel around. But, you know, we follow uh, good friends of magic geekdom and they just, you know, they live there for six months and we were able to do all these things. So that that's not going to happen for me, but I mean, that's, if you really want to immerse yourself, they, they did it, you know, and that would be the way to do it. But yeah, interesting. Great video. I hope you all enjoyed that. Hopefully that was something you uh, really got into. I, yeah, I just want to go. Uh, no, I'm, you know what? I'm also grateful for all of you. Thank you for coming and hanging out with me today. And hopefully you got to see something you didn't know, or maybe you just saw something that uh, took you back to a time uh, in your past that you really enjoyed as well, or maybe even live here. And it's fun seeing, um, place you grew up or you know that you currently reside it's it's pretty cool it, it really is uh thank you mike appreciate it uh go support his channel living walks uh links below please go and watch support like subscribe do what you do that uh it makes you all very very awesome people and it helps him out really does helps these uh, original content creators and uh it's it it, it we're paying it forward by going over there and helping and supporting it. So please do that. Hope everybody's happy, healthy, and safe. Have a wonderful, wonderful day. And uh, 
Yeah. Right on. Bye. Mark from the States. Mark from the States. It's Mark. And he's from.